Hi everyone, Sin here. Welcome back to another project video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to control a stepper motor in LabVIEW with an Arduino Uno utilizing the Hobbyist Toolkit. The LabVIEW aspect of this is going to be very straightforward. However, like with all projects, you need to understand how the system works before you can code it. In this tutorial, I am using a 28BYJ-48 stepper motor which will be connected to a ULN 2003A driver board. The 28BYJ48 is a unipolar 5V 2-phase 4-pole stepper motor with a step angle of 11.25 degrees per full step, or 32 steps per revolution. The output shaft is driven by a 64 to 1 gear ratio, so for every step of the motor, the output shaft will rotate 1 64th of a step, or 32 steps of the motor will result in 2048 steps of the output shaft, which is equivalent to 0.18 degrees per full step. You have the option to drive the stepper motor in three configurations, full step drive, half step drive, and micro step drive. In this video, we will focus on full step drive, half step drive will be covered briefly during the programming, and micro step drive is outside the scope of this video. Full step drive refers to a four step sequence which energizes either one pole at a time or two poles at a time to drive the motor shaft. This will give us a step angle of 11.25 degrees per step at the motor shaft and 2048 steps per revolution at the output shaft. Half step drive refers to an eight step sequence which doubles the resolution of the stepper motor by allowing the rotor to move half the distance per step than with full step drive. However, this means you now have a step angle of 5.625 degrees per step at the motor shaft and 4096 steps per revolution at the output shaft. If you want to learn more about motor theory, I will leave some links down below. We are going to focus on driving the stepper motor with a full step sequence in this tutorial. This is less precise than driving the motor in a half step sequence, but is sufficient for getting the hang of using the stepper motor. The driver board is a breakout board for the ULN 2003A Darlington Transistor Array IC, which is used to drive inductive loads such as a motor which would otherwise damage the microcontroller in the Arduino if driven directly. Do not drive the stepper motor direct from the digital output pins of the Arduino. This will damage the microcontroller. The parts you will need for this project are an Arduino platform supported by links such as the Arduino Uno or Nano, jumper wires to make your electrical connections, a 28BYJ48 stepper motor, a UNL 2003A based driver board, and lastly, a 5V power supply capable of providing up to 300mA. The electrical connections for this circuit are as follows. Connect the IN1, IN2, IN3 and IN4 input pins of the driver board to the digital output pins 8, 9 and 10 and 11 of the Arduino Uno respectively. Connect the 5V input pin of the driver board to an external power supply's 5V rail. I never recommend driving any motor or servo from your Arduino 5V rail. Connect the ground of the driver board to the Arduino ground pin. Connect the ground pin of the Arduino to a negative rail of the external power supply. And lastly, connect the stepper motor to the driver board via their mating connectors. If your driver board and stepper motor do not have mating connectors, follow the application notes in the data sheet for the ULN 2003A. And that is it, we are ready to program the Arduino to control the stepper motor. Launch LabVIEW and create a new VI. I am assuming you have already loaded the hobbyist firmware onto your Arduino Uno at this point. If you have not, or you do not know how, please watch my previous videos on how to do this. These will be linked down below. So once you have your blank VI open, you can follow along from here and add the functions as shown in this example. Starting with the front panel, we have six controls. A stop button to well stop the VI from executing, a step clockwise button which will increment the stepper motor by one increment each time we press or hold it, a run clockwise button which will switch to true when pressed, this will run the stepper motor clockwise continuously until we press the button again. 
If you are curious on how to achieve this, if you right click any button control in LabVIEW and go to mechanical action, you will see you have a variety of options with a summary of them shown on screen. But it might be fun for you to experiment with them and learn the differences between switching and latching. But for brevity's sake, the dark grey button switch when pressed, so they hold their last value until you press them again, and the light grey buttons are switched until released, so they will only hold true while you press the button. The last two buttons are the same as above, except move the stepper motor in the counterclockwise direction. The step speed control will just adjust the loop iteration speed, so you can control the RPM of the stepper motor directly. However, this is not a very precise method of doing this, but it is good enough for this demonstration. And that's it for the front panel. Looking at the block diagram, we see the functions outside the while loop are the same as always. We open and close our references to the Arduino and pass through our loop constants. In this case, the digital output channels we are going to specify, which are digital output channels 8, 9 and 10 and 11 on the Arduino Uno. Next, we can see the controls for the loop speed control and stop button, nothing too exciting here. Where we are controlling the stepper motor direction is through our case structure, which you should be familiar with from my last video. As you can see, each case handles when one of the buttons is pressed, which determines the action of the motor whether to step or run continuously. Ideally, you should do this through an event structure or a queued message handler architecture, but for the sake of this video, let's keep it simple. Every time I press a button on the front panel, the value is stored in the array we are building and then converted to a number. So what we are doing in this small section of code is converting a binary value into a decimal number. You may be wondering how, but let us look at this a bit closer. At any one time, if any of the buttons are pressed, the array is 1 in that position and 0 in the other indexes of the array. For example, if we press step clockwise button, the array will contain 00010, which if is converted to decimal is 2. And when you look at case 2, it is assigned the function to move the stepper motor clockwise using a full drive sequence. If we look at the remaining cases, we can see they are 4, 8 and 16, which if you do the binary math for a 5 bit value, works out to be those numbers for when each button is pressed individually. Now, you may also be wondering what happens if you press multiple buttons at the same time. This is a good question, but we'll work around it by not including those cases in the case structure. So if you press both the run clockwise and counterclockwise buttons at the same time, it will result in a 5-bit value of 11000, which is 24 in decimal. And as you can see, we don't have a case that handles 24, so nothing will happen until one or both of the buttons are pressed again. This is a clever workaround to prevent user error. You may also be wondering why I started the array with a false value. This is for the default case. So if nothing is pressed, the decimal value is zero, which is the default case and does nothing. Now, the contents of the cases are just repeated for the clockwise and counterclockwise function. The mechanical action of the buttons are what control if the motor just steps or runs continuously. So the code in this aspect is quite simple as cases 2 and 16 are the same, and 4 and 8 are also identical. Now how do we get the stepper motor to move? We do so by energizing and de-energizing the coils in a specific sequence. In this case, we are utilizing a full step drive sequence that will energize two coils at a time. You can also use a half drive step sequence by doubling the digital output sequence to 8 functions and then altering the boolean input array to match the correct sequence. We energize the coils by tying them to ground. This is because if we examine the data sheet, we can see the center of each phase is tapped to positive 5 volts. So if we ground the inputs of a coil, you'll have a plus 5 volt drop across it, which will in turn energize the coil. If you put 5 volts across the coil input, the net voltage will be zero, so the coil will remain unenergized. The full drive two phase sequence is as follows A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A. This sequence will rotate the stepper motor in a clockwise direction. If you want it to rotate in the opposite direction, you simply reverse this sequence as shown in my other case. To send this sequence to the stepper motor, 
we are just using the digital ride function from the hobbyist palette. And as you can see, we energize each coil in sequence, where I am using the links resource and error wire to maintain the sequence of execution. The second digital ride function will not execute until the first one has passed on the links resource and error data and so forth. So we maintain an order of execution without the need for a sequence structure. The drive sequences themselves are just a 1D array of Boolean values where each value corresponds to the digital output channel of the Arduino in the order specified in the digital output channels array. And as you can see, they match the truth table for a full mode sequence. Now that is it. You should now be able to control your stepper motor through LabVIEW and your Arduino Uno. The only remaining thing to do is to clean up the VI and create a custom sub VI to handle the drive sequences for you, but that is optional. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It helps this channel's exposure greatly. I will see you in the next part.